Hi guys, here's Monday's video. Um, if the audio is a little bit muffled on this video, it's the air conditioner in the background. And I'm not going to mess with it until I know it's just impossible to make this video with the air conditioner going. Uh, but if we look at this table and we look at these four stripes and then take a look at the five ball blocking this corner pocket and the four ball blocking that corner pocket, it makes sense to just avoid the stripes and start with the solids. But this is a two-pack, so after I shoot the solids, I'm going to go ahead and take care of the stripes and the rest of the balls on the table like I did the last video. Uh, the, the original plan here was to go 4-3-1, and I wind up going 4-1-3, and I'll explain why I did that when we get to it after I shoot the four. But uh, let's take a look at the lines. And I'll give you a second with that, and you come up with a plan to get from uptown to downtown. It may not be real apparent, but I was trying to get further down the table. I can't shoot that three ball now because I'm going to go in the traffic and I just don't want to do it. In fact, you never want to do it. You always want to avoid traffic if you can possibly do it. Now I have to change the plan and shoot that three ball in this side and shoot the one ball before the three ball. And I have to come up on the short side of the three ball. And the problem is, if I don't get right on that three ball, I'm not going to have another shot. I want to be snickered behind that 14 and that 15. Um, so it's a little bit dangerous. A better way to do this is just come down off that uh, top rail and bounce out for center table. But I decide to uh, let, let my stroke out a little bit and put left hand in with top left on this in order to come back around the three and after that I'll be playing shape on the five ball to get back on that two ball in order to draw straight back on that seven ball and from there use the six as the key ball to get on the eight. Admittedly it's you know it's probably not the best pattern in the world but I mean they can't all be award winners. Before I shoot this three ball, you'll see me take a real good look at the two ball line. I really need to get straight in on that two ball. Um, in order to take care of that seven, and one of the reasons I want to take care of that seven is because it is a problem. I'm not saving that ball for the key ball because uh, that 14 ball is making things a little bit difficult. And if I get the wrong angle on the seven, I want to be in a little bit of trouble. So yeah, we're going five, two, seven, six, eight, and um, a little bit touchy. Again, the key shot here is getting the right angle when I shoot this three to get on the five in order to get straight in on the two to be able to get a shot on that seven and take care of that before the six. that's the right position I wanted on that five ball to get back on that two ball but you have to be careful here you don't want to come off that rail and hit that six and the objective is to get straight in and we're playing against the line on this two ball so it's a little bit hairy but I think I can handle it even if I get a little bit on the right or a little bit on the left side of the two ball the objective is to get straight back between that seven and that 14 and be able to bounce off the rail a little bit. I don't want to get stuck on the rail or straight in on the 7 because then I want to have a 
semi difficult shot on the uh, six ball to get back on the eight. So yeah, it's a little bit touchy. Let's see how it goes. All right, we're perfect on the two, and this is a little bit of a finesse shot. You want to bounce off the rail, but you don't want to bounce too hard. It's a little bit touchy, but I think we can handle it. Let's keep on rolling here. Perfect, and what matters here is staying below that six ball line. So I'm just putting a little bit of left and a little bit of top on this to get the right angle to bounce off that rail and get back on this eight ball. And I wind up going a little bit too far on the eight ball. You'll see what happens after this clip. This shot here tends to scare some players because at first glance it looks like a scratch shot and it looks like that cue ball is going to go straight into this uh, bottom left hand corner. But um, in order to scratch in that bottom left hand corner you would have to miss this eight ball by shooting it way too full and way too hard. So let's take a closer look at this. And you can see we're barely skimming. If you look at the line straight through with, without the eight ball even there, uh, you can see that the cue ball is going to hit this rail. And because we're barely skimming it, it's not going to distort that line very much. If we were hitting it fuller, you might have a problem. But, you know, if you hit it fuller, you're going to miss. So, yeah, I mean, it's no big deal. You have to You have to think about stuff like this before you panic and before you, you know, do something crazy with the cue ball. So we're going to save this shot for the loop back and then we're going to run the rest of these strike balls out too plus another eight ball with it. And uh, I'll see you guys on Wednesday as we continue our yakking session with one pocket. California one pocket player Mark Hillier. Soon to be Texas one pocket player so look out Texas. Anyhow let's do this. I'll see you guys on Wednesday. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.